Hey, where are you going with the flowers and candy? Huh? Where are you going? I'll tell you, but I bought these chocolate-covered bonbons and I bought the flowers. I'm going to bring them to Hillary. Hillary? I want to find out how I stand with Hillary. Uh, are they good chocolates? Delicious chocolates. I tried a couple of you, them. You tried it? Let me see. Want see him? Hey, there's only one chocolate in there. What do you think I am, a hog? I ain't gonna eat the last one. <laughs> Careful what you're saying. Take it easy, take it easy. Bob, can you tell me where Hillary Brook lives? Hillary Brook? Hey, Abbott. What? He just got a little too old for Hillary Brook. I fed him while she likes me. Just, uh, just a minute. Uh, what do you want Hillary Brook for? Well, for your information, I'm her father. Oh. And I'm here to take her back to the country where she belongs. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Brook. Don't take Hillary back to the country. I mean, after all, she likes it here and she's got a lot of nice friends. That happens to be your opinion. But I say she ought to go back home in the country where she belongs. Now, uh, just a You minute. gotta help me, Abbott. Don't let her take Hillary back. I'll help you out. Uh, what is it in the country that she can do she can't do here? Well, she can improve her cooking so she'll be a good wife when she's married. Uh, and she can improve her sewing. Right now, she's a darn good darner. She can darn the best socks in the world. She darned that sock for me. She darned that sock? She sure did, and darn good she did at that. That's the only sock like that in the world. That's the only sock like that in the world? That's what I said. Hey, yeah, but I hate to do this. Tell me spot it, but listen, give me $10 quick. Sure, this is a fight. Well, I'll give you $10 right back. Ooh. Now, here's the $10. I'll bet you that I know where there's another sock like that. You want to bet me $10? That's right. <laughs> well, now, just a moment, then. Just a moment, and we'll see. Wait. <laughs> there's a strong buck right there. Now, who's going to hold the money? Well, let Mr. Abbott hold the money. I don't know him. Well, well he's as honest as the day is long. Well, the day's worth to get an office chart around here. <laughs> Let me understand. You're betting me $10 that you know where there's another sock like this. That's right. Yeah? yeah. Where? On the other foot. <laughs> now, that's the way we are smart in city slippers. Where's Hillary's apartment? Over there. Good night. Uh, you... Hey, Mr. Fields, I'm sorry. We don't mean to make any noise here in the hallway. Huh? But while you're here, you're a pretty smart man, and I want to ask you something. Come here. Yeah. Oh, but that's a car, Mr. Fields. What's the matter, son? Look, thank you. Mr. Fields, yes? can you tell me something about the farm life? Farm if, life? If I was to work on a farm, what would I, what would my chores be? He, he well, knows how to milk cows. Oh, my boy, milk cows. That's not, that's only one of the things you do on a farm. What do I have to do? Oh, there's lots of things that you do on a farm. Oh, now, if you listen to me carefully, I'll give you an idea. First, you get up, say, about 3 o'clock in the morning. Now, you milk 30 or 40 cows. Mm -hmm. After you milk the cows, you go down, you carry in 15 or 20 buckets of water from the well. After that, you chop down a tree, make 15 or 25 or 30 cords of firewood. You take the firewood, you pile it up and get it all set. Then you feed 200 or 300 chickens, and then you feed 50 or 60 goats, and you slap the hogs, and zingo, you're ready for breakfast. I just have a piece of toast. I'm always in time. <laughs> That's the boy. Now, after breakfast, it's very simple. You go out and you fix the tractor. Takes three or four hours to fix the tractor. Then you plow five or six or seven or eight acres of ground. After that, you dig and dig and dig in the potato patch. You dig out five or six bushes of potatoes. Then you go out to the barn, and you pitch 15 or 20 tons of hay. After you pitch the hay, you go out in the orchard. You pluck 15 or 20 boxes of apples. You crate the apples. You sort the apples. Then you take fertilizer. Five or ten Ten tons of fertilizer, fertilize the onion patches, and zingo, you're ready for lunch. I'll just put a little piece of butter on the toast. I don't want to waste too much time here. Oh, to it. Now, after lunch, that's where you have fun. You dig a drainage ditch around the first 40 acres of the farm, then you fix the other 40 acres, the fences, all around the other side. You churn about 200 pounds of butter. Then you trim the hedges. It's about five miles of hedges. After you trim the hedges, you fill the lanterns, 150 lanterns. Then you bed down about 200 cows. You curry 150 horses, and zingo, you're ready for supper. That's all I do is eat. <laughs> eat? That reminds me. Thanks. See you later. Yes. Oh, he told me everything. But what about after supper? After supper? You don't know? No. Look, Abbott, what's he mean by carrying all those horses? I couldn't even lift a good-sized dog. Let me explain to you. You see, after relaxing all day, now Relax. comes, yes, now comes the hard work. You see, at night, you harness up the horse to the buggy, and you take your beautiful girlfriend, Dillery, you place her in the buggy, you sit alongside her, you take the reins, you're driving down a country lane, and your little horsey, he knows all the lanes in the country. He knows when to stop, and when he does stop, you put your arms around your girlfriend, Hillary, like this. You look into her eyes, she looks into yours, and you pucker up your lips, she puckers up hers. Then you know what you do? Zingo, I'm ready for night lunch. Uh, 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 uh,
sight. Daughter, darling, this city life ain't for you. Come back to the farm with me. I promised Clem Porterhouse I'd bring you back to it. He's been heartbroken ever since you left. Why, every night he stands under my window and serenades me. He's got such a beautiful voice. Why don't the guy marry your father? I don't care how good his voice is. I'm not going to marry his voice. Well, you'll not marry anyone unless he's got some talent. Hey, Lou. I've got a way that I think we can save Hillier from going back to the farm. You do like her, don't you? Oh, very much. Uh -huh. uh, uh, knock on Mr. Fields' door. No way. Go ahead. No. <laughs> What's the idea? Uh, Mr. Fields, uh, you have a brother who was a singing teacher? Yeah, no more. I happen to have a card right here. Professor Mellonhead Fields, Ph.D., L.L.D., and D.B.T.C. Oh, thanks a lot. Tell him I sent you. Yeah, yeah. Right. What's this D.B.T.C.? Don't bend the card. <laughs> Come on. Well, let's see. Now we've got to find out where Professor Melvin Head's singing school is. I find out where We'll ask somebody. Wait, Excuse me, lady. Oh, I would like very much. Thank you so much. I'll be for me there. Give me the flowers. I ain't going to give you nothing. I'm only trying to find out where Professor Melvin Head's singing school is. Where it is? Yeah, what street? Oh, street. Oh, isn't the street yeah. fascinating? I love to walk up and down the street. One meets so many interesting people there. The police with the peddlers, the newsboys. Look at the little newsbender down there. Sell you those papers and the cute little fellow. Wait a minute. What are you building? What are you building? The buildings. Oh, the buildings. Wonderful. The big, tall buildings. Look at that new building over there with that beautiful girl in light. Isn't Look, that? he's not interested in girls in lights, lady. Oh, girls in tights. How about you, Santa? Lady, we're trying to find out the location of uh, Professor Mellonhead's singing school. Well, <laughs> I must be off. I think you <laughs> I have to go and meet my girlfriend. Girlfriend? Yes, she's taking singing lessons at Professor Melonhead Studio. Singing lessons. I love to sing. Don't you love to sing? Oh! Lesson. Just when I was about to eat my pizza costco. Oh, madam, I'm very sorry that uh, you hurt your uh, pizza pie. No, no. <laughs> Why, this lady sings like a bird. Well, she opened up the window and let the old buzzard fly out. I... Oh, damn you. You gargantuan grub worm. I'll have you know that I'm free, full of life, and 38. You're lucky. You just missed the draft. I... Get out of here. I never heard of the students you got here. I'm sorry to say, Professor, this happens to be my partner. How do you do? Mr. Costello, isn't it? Costello. Very glad to know you, sir. Uh, this is the lad I was telling you about. Uh -huh. uh, do you think you can uh, teach him to sing? Oh, oh can I feel? Oh, oh, oh. You think you can? I've, I've made singers out of everybody in the world. Of five. Every Hollywood star is a pupil of mine. Do tell. I even taught Lassie how to sing. But Lassie's a dog. He's a human being. <laughs> I always get that what I mean. When I'm through teaching him to sing, I'll be the light of his life, the light of his soul. Put your hat on, will you? The light shining in my eyes right now. <laughs> Come on, Hillary wants me to sing. I gotta do something. See what you're doing with. It. Yeah, thank you. I'll see you down the street. Well, on account of you, first with that uh, thing, and then I gotta sing for the old man. Costello? Yes, sir. First, we have to find out what kind of a voice you've got. Now, hold still. Hey! Uh, ah! Better call him. <laughs> That's fine. Now, let me hear a few notes of, let's say, Jeannie with the light brown hair. Come on. I dream. I dream. Oh, Jeannie with the light brown hair. You have a magnificent voice except for one thing. Your posture is bad. The way you stand is very important in singing. You see, your tummy pooches out and your hips droop in. What you have to do is down in front and up in the back. See, down in front and up in the back. Come on, down in front and up in the back. <laughs> you see, the voice does not come from here as most people think. The voice comes from the diaphragm, which is down here. You see, this is the larynx or the voice box. Now, the voice comes from the diaphragm up through the esophagus into the larynx. Larynx is up into the diaphragm. The diaphragm up through the larynx. Larynx is down to the diaphragm. Get away from the frying pan. No, 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 my boy. Don't get excited if you're ticking. Oh, gee, with the light. No, 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 no. 
you, you're not doing it correctly. Now, you listen to the teacher, Professor Mellonhead will show you. First, I want to hear a tone. I want a tone to come out of your mouth shaped like a pear. Which end first? Uh, never mind. It doesn't make any difference. I want a nice, full tone. Let me hear a tone. One tone. A round tone. Round. Round? Round. Boom! You're choking it back. Let me hear it. Bring it out. Let me hear it. Boom! No. No, no. Bring it out. Throw it out. Boom! Don't hold it back. You're choking. Throw it out. Boom! The wind back it out. Boom! Go down here. Bring it up and out. Come on. Boom! What's the matter? A slip. No, no, no. I want the tool to come up. Oh, you got it. You got to throw the tone out. That's the important now, listen, You don't breathe properly. You see, you choke back the important tones. Now, there's no vibration. I want you to breathe for me. Deep. That's wonderful. You see, your lungs are full of air. My boy, you're magnificent. Now. There's one trick that the great Greek orator Demosthenes used to do to cultivate and improve his vocal tones. He used to put pebbles in his mouth, under his tongue, and sing through the pebbles. Now, we... Porasso's mouth. That's right. You like the idea? Uh -huh. Oh, let Wait a minute. I've got something a little tastier. We don't have any rocks, but I happen to have a few crackers left from lunch. Now, I'll show you what I mean. You see, you put a few crackers in the mouth like this instead of rocks, huh? Hmm? Now, we do a song called Figaro, see? Oh, Figaro! Figaro! You see what I mean? Did you get the idea? I got Figaro! You see, it's a very simple thing. Well, Lou, now that you've taken your singing lessons, how do you feel? All right, all right, all right, all right. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. <laughs> Come on down there to Hillary's father and show him what talent you have. Come on, I want to get there in a hurry before the flowers die. How do you love those chrysanthemums? The what? Chrysanthemums. Those are daisies. They're chrysanthemums. How do you spell it? They're daisies. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, yeah. you are now ready to save Hillary from the farm. Figaro, Figaro, Figaro. We are now going in. I don't think I'm hitting that note right. I don't think I'm, I'm doing it the way I'm supposed to. Well, how did you behave yourself? Now we're going into Hillary's apartment. You're going to sing for our father. Wait, your face is very effort. Well, fix it up. I don't care if Lou Costello can sing. Clem sings and accompanies himself on the piano. Uh-oh. As far as I'm concerned, I'd rather have him play the piano than sing. I ought to say, Lou, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's that old man want me to do? I took singing lessons, now the guy has to be a piano player. I've got an idea. Got We're idea. going down to Bachigaloop's music store right away. Come on, I'll explain to you on the way down. Here we go again. Hey, Sneaky! Come here! Hello, Louis. Hey, do me a favor. What do you want me to do? Look, I got... Oh, no, no, you... Uh, I always do something to you, and I never get nothing for it. Ain't it just like a kid? Don't argue now, kids. Now, look, Sneaky, I want you to do me a favor. You take these flowers, and you give them to Hillary. And I want to tell you something else. Hillary's father is in there with her. He just come up from the country, and he's got a lot of money. Now, if you give these flowers to Hillary, I know her father will give you a nice big tip. Are you sure now? I'm positive he'll give you a big tip. Yeah, you think I should do it? Well, naturally. Sure should. Okay, pal. I'll do it. You give him to Hillary, and, and her father will give you a big tip. Only one thing. What's that? Whatever he gives you, I want half. Oh, see, there you go. You're always wanting more. <laughs> Should I do it? That's fair and square. All right, if he said it, then it's good. Don't you think he'll split us 50 50? He'll give you a 50. He'll give you half of whatever he gets. On your honor. I'll give you half of everything I get. On your honor. On my honor. Boy Scout salute, three fingers, up to the head. All right. Okay, now give him the Hillary. I'll see you later. Come on. Wait a minute, Abbott. You did I don't get this whole thing here. Now, listen, you want to prove to Hillary's father that you're a great musician, don't you? Yeah. I have an idea. What is it? We're going in here and buy a Victrola. Yeah. And a record, a piano record. Then we're going over to Hillary's house and prove to our father that you're the greatest piano player in the world. How? How are you going to do this? Very simple. When we get up there, I'll sneak behind the piano with the Victrola and the record. Yeah. Now, all you have to say is, 
All right. Yeah. You go to the piano and start playing. Say all right, and I'll put the record on. How's it going to stop? You say all right again, then I'll stop. Now, you get behind the piano with the Victrola and the record. That's and then when I say all right, you start to play it. Simple. When I say all right, the second time you stop. That's simple. Do you think you're marvelous? <laughs> <laughs> hey! I want to buy a Victrola and a record, a piano record. I got a nice Victrola. Got a nice Victrola. Oh, this is brand new. Is now, it? how about the record? Does it cost a fifteen dollars? That's it? all right, Bachigalu. Record? I got a new record to hear. No, I want a piano record. Oh, piano! I got it just at the thing of the That's what I want. You like this one? What is it? This is called Cicciarinella, the new Nugan, the Mutsagawa, the Christian, the Mutsagawa, the Donna Bell, the West Nugan, the Cicciarinella. What does it mean? Ophelia. Ophelia. Yeah, I reckon. Sure. Yeah, I reckon. Right. How, how, how much is this? This is a very expensive record. Oh, sixty. 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 Oh, that means when I go down to South, to see my mom in Alabama, she come on the front of the door, but I miss her because I go on the back of the door, we miss each other for three weeks. Is that a record? It's a piano record. Piano record. my piano fingers are all right. Yeah. Hey. Hey, Stinky. Did you give Hillary the flowers? Uh-huh. Did, yeah. did, did you get anything from the father? Mm-hmm. Well, come on, I want half. Come on, give him half, Stinky. Come on, I want half. <laughs> He always pays his debts. Oh, come on. Come on, take yourself up your ass, Bert. Now, look, Lou. Now, you understand everything clearly. I understand. You're going to get behind a piano with the Victrola. Right. And then when I say all right, you're going to play the record. Yes. And then when I say all right the second time, you stop it. That's all there is to it. Now, knock on the door. Don't make any mistakes. All right. <laughs> Hello, Lewis. Hello, Bud. Hello. I want you boys to say hello to my father. Come on in. Oh. Hillary, I've got a great surprise for you. What is it? The greatest piano player in the world. Why, Lewis, I didn't know you could play the piano. Oh. Ah, neither did I, bro. I, I took That's some fast lessons off you. Well, dear, there's nothing that father likes better than musicians, and particularly a piano player. Well, we know that. Well, you see, Hillary, yeah, we know that, too. And, uh, and your father wants a piano player in a family. I want to take a crack at that. I want to show you I can really play piano. Oh, well, I couldn't be more pleased. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go and get father now and bring him out here so he can hear you play the piano. Oh, Louis. I'll limber up my fingers while you're gone. Go ahead. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Now, get behind the piano here. Yeah. And suppose your father comes in, tell him I went out uh, to get a newspaper or something. Anything at all. Look, don't forget that. When I say all right, you start to play the record. Uh, I'll when I say all right the second time, stop it. If you don't, somebody's going to get right out of the train. Don't worry about it. Oh, Lewis, you know, Father, he was just having a late breakfast. And, Lewis, I want to thank you for these lovely flowers, and I thought they should be in here for this I some flowers. occasion. Yes, I can see they smell very delicious, too. You know that? <laughs> well, get over here. Don't get over here. Well, Pop, I'm going to play the piano for you. I like to play the piano for you. I want to show you I'm a great musician. Oh, he plays beautifully. Does he? Yes. I'd like to hear you, bud. You would, bud. <laughs> Let me sit over here. All right. <laughs> Did your father always eat this late? Oh, he didn't have breakfast early this morning, so he was just sitting inside having it now. That's a murderous thing there. Well, now, uh, what you, won't you like to have me play for you? Well, let me see. I'd like to hear, um, Cavalier Rusticana. Cavalier Rusticana? Yeah. You play it on the piano? Some do. Some do. Cavalier Rusticana. Uh, that's a very tricky piece, you know. Uh, Cavalier Rusticana. Yeah. Really nothing to it. Cavalier. With both hands. I will play with two hands, Cavalier Rusticana. You know how it goes? No, no. You don't? No. You know how it goes? No. Will you hear Cavalier Rusticana? I play like nobody plays Cavalier Rusticana. <laughs> so you don't know how it goes, huh? No. <laughs> Cavalier Rusticana. <laughs> All right. I said it was all right. All right! Did I say it yet? Well, 
That was Cavalier Rusticana. Oh, Lewis, that was beautiful. Lewis, that was beautiful. Any other piece you want to play for you? Yes, yes. I tell you what. What? Play the port and the peasant. Port and the peasant. Not pheasant, peasant. That sounds like power. Port and peasant, peasant. Is that anything like Cavalier Rusticana? No. Well, you play it with two hands. Yeah, I guess I do. You know how it goes? No, no. You know, you know how it goes? No. Music closed. We're picking out some pips. Put off the tape. Put the Did you like the first piece I played? Oh, it was wonderful. It was... No, it was all right. Oh. I know. Will you keep your big mouth shut? Where did I... What is this supposed to say? Up. Now I'm going to play the other one for you that you want to put in peasant. Listen. All right. I was going to say it was all right. see the kids out there. It lightens my heart. I'm a great pianist, you know. It's love of the soul and all that sort of thing. Get it right, you donkey. <laughs> now, uh, any other piece you'd like to have me play for you? Yeah. Let me hear you play the seventh. <sighs> seventh what? Why, the seventh symphony, Lewis. Seventh symphony. Well, this guy digs them up. You know how it goes? No, I don't know. That was your old man. Musical family. He don't know how nothing goes. Well, I shall play the seventh for you. Hope I come out on top. <laughs> Impersonation. Moby Dick. <laughs> I'm not afraid of piano. I'm not afraid of piano. Seven. All right. All right. All right. All right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right. All right. All right. I gotta get your hands in motion. All right.
matter with you? What are you so sad about? I never do anything right. Well, I'm glad you admit it. You never do. You're always in trouble. Always doing something wrong. Why do you do these things, Lou? Why? Oh, I'm a bad boy. Certainly you are. Good night, folks. So long.